I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor to defend His cause. Maintain the honors of His word, the glory of His cross. Hello, I'm James Brown, and on behalf of the East End Church of Christ located in Toronto, Canada, I'd like to welcome you to today's edition of Walking Through the Bible, a podcast where we seek to study the Bible and the Bible alone. Please stick around afterwards for information on how you can contact us. But for now, please go to the book of Genesis and we'll turn you over to Jeremy Disokam for our study of the day. Thank you, James, and welcome to all of our viewers. This is the 170th lesson in our study of Genesis. Yesterday, we covered Genesis chapter 49, verses 28 to 33, discussing the death of Jacob. If you missed that episode and would like to watch it, you can find it and all of our other podcasts on our website at www.eastendchurch.org. You can also find them on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash Christ under the Walking Through the Bible Genesis playlist. Today we're going to begin with Genesis 50 verse 1 and read through verse 13. The text that you'll see on the screen is from the English Standard Version, but you're welcome to follow along with any version that you have. So let's now read Genesis 50, beginning at verse 1. Then Joseph fell on his father's face and wept over him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. So the physicians embalmed Israel. Forty days were required for it, for that is how many are required for embalming. And the Egyptians wept for him seventy days. And when the days of weeping for him were past, Joseph spoke to the household of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have found favor in your eyes, please speak in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, I am about to die. In my tomb that I hewed out for myself in the land of Canaan, there shall you bury me. Now therefore, let me please go up and bury my father. Then I will return. And Pharaoh answered, Go up and bury your father as he made you swear. So Joseph went up to bury his father. With him went all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders of the land of Egypt, as well as the, of all the household of Joseph, his brothers, and his father's household. Only their children, their flocks, and their herds were left in the land of Goshen. And there went up with him both chariots and horsemen. It was a very great company. When they came to the threshing floor of Atad, which is beyond the Jordan, they lamented there with a very great and grievous lamentation, and he made a mourning for his father seven days. When the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning on the threshing floor of Atad, they said, This is a grievous mourning by the Egyptians. Therefore the place was named Abel Mizraim, it is beyond the Jordan. Thus his sons did for him as he commanded them. For his sons carried him to the land of Canaan, and buried him in the cave of the field at Machpelah, to the east of Mamre, which Abraham bought with the field from Ephron the Hittite to possess as a burying place. At the end of the last chapter, Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, died at the age of 147. He died the youngest of the three patriarchs, with Abraham living to 175 and Isaac living to 180. This is to be expected as throughout Genesis we see man's years being shortened down by God from the hundreds of years now to just over a hundred years. As we continue on in the Old Testament, our years are becoming even shorter, where David says in Psalms 90 verse 10, The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. God is in control of the length of mankind's years and can lengthen them and shorten them as he wills. Despite living only to 147 years old, though Jacob was a faithful man trusting in God to do what he had promised. Just as you would expect when a parent dies, Joseph wept over his father. He then commanded that the servants, the physicians, embalm his father for burial. Embalming occurs in order to preserve a corpse from decay. This is the first time we read of someone being embalmed in the Bible. Previously, when we read of someone dying, we simply read of them being buried a couple days later. This was not the case with Jacob. In ancient Egypt, bodies were typically embalmed by a process known as mummification. Without getting into too many of the gruesome details, a dead body is dried out in order to prevent it from decaying as fast. The body would then be wrapped in linens and placed in a coffin for burial. The process of drying out the body is usually about 40 days, while the entire process takes about 70 days, just like the Bible says. 
When Jacob died here, we still see Joseph in a place of prominence, despite the famine being over for 12 years by this point, because the passage tells us that Egypt wept for Jacob. Joseph then asked Lee for Pharaoh to go, to go and bury his father in Canaan, in the cave of Machpelah, the burial place purchased by Abraham some 170 years earlier. Pharaoh grants Joseph this request, and all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his household, and all the elders of Egypt accompany Joseph and the family back to Canaan. The caravan is so large, even the Canaanites take notice. Once Jacob has been buried, the family then returns to Egypt. With that, our time is up for today. Please join us, Lord willing, tomorrow when we will continue our study of the book of Genesis, beginning with Genesis 50, 14. Thank you, Jeremy. And to our viewers, we also thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button below. Should you have a question or comment, please leave them below or email them to answerintheword at gmail.com. We'll try to respond to you as quickly as we can. We hope you'll join us, the Lord willing, tomorrow when we will be continuing on our study of the book of Genesis. Goodbye for now and have a great day. I'm not ashamed to own my Lord, nor